Are you um, like for the next one? You're like diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, diamond <laughs> tape. The diamond tape, kid. It's Cat Sheep, and right now on Magic Chilled, I am up close with the one and only, the wonderful, the nicest guy in pop. It's George Ezra. <laughs> Hello. Hi, George Ezra. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? Good. I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's so nice to see people like in person, mm-hmm. getting like life back to normal again. Yes, it is lovely to be able to do things again. Yeah, that well, was amazing. You are here to talk about your brand new single, Green Green Grass, and your new mm-hmm. album, Gold Rush Kid, as mm-hmm. well. We're going to get onto that in just a bit, but first, uh, let's uh, speak about the first single from Gold Rush Kid anyone for you why did you pick this one to be the first one off the album it was quite, normally I find this quite difficult like yeah. you've, you've got all these songs and someone says what do you want to release and you kind of go all of them yeah you know um, but this was really it just presented itself it was one of the first songs that we wrote for the record it was the first song we finished in the studio with the band I knew that I wanted to open the live sets with it. It just sounds like an introduction. It opens the album. It's track one on the album. So it just felt like the best introduction to the record. And I'm so happy that that's the way we did it. Because there is this moment where no matter how sure you are about something, there's that voice in the back of your head like, "Mm, is that the right, you know, it's been a while. Is this the song you're going to come back with? But it's just gone amazingly well. It's been a really been a really lovely thing and the thing is as well gearing up to release music this time more than ever there is this kind of you're aware that you're not owed anything do you know what I mean so then you go like well you don't know how this is going to be received and you can't control that and so yeah it's just really lovely that yeah like we did open the sets with it last week and it was it was as if it had been out for years and years it was really it was amazing yeah people have really taken to it haven't they I know what a cool thing yeah and not a surprise it is a massive hit I mean, it is a banger, but I've I've uh, known yeah. it for a while now. I've had the song for like 18 months, you know, and, and had to listen to it so many times. It does start to, you it becomes familiar. And when something's familiar, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't surprise you. Yeah, I know what's course. coming yeah, bef- yeah, yeah. when it before it's released. So it's just really nice to see other people hearing it for the first time. I love the thought of finishing the song going, that's a banger. Can't well, it, it, well it's all relative to yourself, though. So I don't go like, send it to press. This is going to change everything. But yeah, I do go like, relative to George, this is a good tune. This Give me my good. award now. Yeah, yeah. Not quite. Uh, let's talk about your new album then, Gold Rush Kid. Mm-hmm. Who, what, why, where, how, when? Well, I think I've covered all of them. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like, I've relied in the past on tying records to a journey of some sort. So like the first record I bombed around Europe for a month on the trains. It was amazing. Kept a little journal as I went. The second one I went and lived in Barcelona for the month and kept a little journal and then, you know, wrote the songs on the other side of those journeys. And then, of course, couldn't do that because of the lockdown. Um, And I think, like, this has been echoed through my friends, no matter, you know all different jobs and what people do, this opportunity to go, why do I do what I do? Mm -hmm. Why do I do it the way that I do it? How have I ended up here? You know, what is this thing? And I really had that. We'd finished two years of really intense touring and I kind of wasn't the happiest I remember being, but I think just tired out and by my own doing, you know. Um, And so I started to go, I don't know that I want to do this. I'll always play music like I... And I get a genuine kick out of sitting on the sofa playing guitar and singing. So then you go, well, if that's a kick, why do you need people to hear you do it? Yeah. You know? um, and then, I, and so I was going along with these thoughts in my head and, and letting them grow until I started to write for the next record. So I couldn't go away on a journey, but started flicking through these old journals and then started to think about what it is I actually get to do. I convinced myself that it's this big, scary thing. And it's not at all. Yeah. It's like the most beautiful thing. I, I, I have loved this thing since I was about 14. And I, I've cared very little about anything else. Um, and I really, it was the most uh, kind of inspiring thing to think. You do what you love. Yeah, like forget all the nonsense that comes with it, which there is, but that's true of anything. You'd like, think of the people you've met and the places you've been and the things that you've done as a result of this thing. And it's not going to last forever. So instead, George, of you wishing it away, just, just let it, just go with it and, and trust that it will end at some point, but that's not today. 
Um, and see it as a gold rush. That's how I started to think of it. Oh, see wow. it as this thing that's out there for you to enjoy for now um, and make the most of it. And so then I got a bit like pumped up on this idea. I was like, I'm the gold rush kid. You know, yeah. I didn't start introducing myself as in the pub. But <laughs> there was just this like thing in my head where I was like, I like that. And, and like, you can't, well, for me anyway, you can't question too much what these ideas mean when it's creative, it's like, that just sounds like an album to me. Yeah. And it sounds like a, a good way of approaching the record. So, yeah, the Gold Rush Kid. Also, you get to have an album cover that's gold. I mean, I know it's not all about that, but it's that's pretty, pretty cool, exciting, though. isn't pretty it? Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, like, for the next one, you're like, diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, diamonds. Same. <laughs> the diamond take it. Um, yeah. This, you can have that This starts a trilogy, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's worked for some others that's all I'm saying I know yeah <laughs> so that was it I mean that's a very long winded answer to a simple question but that that, and I think I covered it all but th- you there did. was this you sat down thing. you had a word with yourself you said yeah. do I want to do this and that's you a good absolutely place to be because you're, like, yeah. you're like I could walk away but actually yeah. I've got more in me okay tell us about your brand new single then because someone's got a summer banger on their hands and it's not me it's yeah. George Ezra <laughs> yeah <laughs> This is incredible, this brand new tune. As soon as I heard it, I was like, right, this is a summer tune that we're going to be dancing to outside. Festivals, parties, it's going to be on. Is this the vibe that you had when you were writing it? Completely. Yeah, okay, Completely. So I was flicking through these old journals and there was just this one line on one of the days. And uh, it came from, I was in St. Lucia with two of my closest friends. um, And we were at this beach bar that was tiny, 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 tiny beach bar. Uh, with these dudes that were on the other side of the bar. They had this cool box that was filled with homemade rum punch. Um, the and then they had ever. like iced lagers, bottled beer. So we were like A-being the two. It was just beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> we would go back and uh, the rum punch. And then this music started up. Loud, loud, loud music. And I got, I was so curious about what this music was. Um, so I ended up excusing myself. I said, I'll be back. I started running down these streets in this little town and I got to the high street and there was um, was like sound systems out, people cooking out, hugging, dancing. It was genuinely beautiful to see, like this moment. So I jumped in this shop and asked the girls that worked in this shop, what's going on? And they said, today's a funeral day and we're celebrating three lives that we've lost in our community, which made the whole thing even more beautiful. And it was so unlike anything you know, I'd seen before. Um, and that night, after quite a few round punch, I didn't, they were like, you should join in. And I was like, no, I've got very serious business <laughs> to attend to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but in my little journal that I'd taken on that trip, it just said, green, green grass, blue, blue sky, you better throw a party on the day that I die. Oh, Which, wow. you know, and that was maybe four years ago. I don't know, a long time ago. So I was flicking through this old journal, saw that lyric, and I was like, I love that. And with everything going on and, you know, where my head was at of going, like, just throw yourself into this thing, it it just made me smile. Made me relax as well. Like, yeah. the whole thing calmed me down. Um, and it is. It's just an absolute... It's a joy. Like, we played it last week and made me smile. Yeah, and you have that vision in your head before it. And a rum punch in your hand before oh, you go. <laughs> it's lethal, that stuff. Yeah, Honestly, I don't know what they put it here. <laughs> So you've played some intimate shows already, but you've got a big gig planned for Finsbury Park in the summer and then a full UK wide tour, arena tour coming up later in the year. Are you excited? Are you nervous? We was we were talking about this earlier. So like London was the first show of these warm ups and it went it couldn't have gone better. Yeah. Well, most reviews agree. No, there I was saw one the, or two. The okay, were good, incredible. Good. But th- like it could not have gone better, genuinely, and it was just amazing. And then the next day come 1pm, so nervous for the show that night. It doesn't matter what happened the night before. You're like, oh, I've got to do that thing again, and how do I do it? <laughs> and so am I excited for the shows coming up? I really am. And, and deep down, I know we've got it. Like, we do this thing. It's what we do. But I am nervous. Nervous, excited. Those two things together. Finsbury Park is huge. Yeah, it's, it's 45,000 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a field. To see that many people as well back singing back at you because it's been a while. Do you know what though? Like that, right? the, almost the bigger the audience, the more relaxing it is because mm. it becomes really abstract. Yeah. If you're playing in like a little club, it's like, that's oh, terrifying. Don't look at me. Yeah, because you can see <laughs> eyes. Um, so yeah, it's almost like the it becomes more abstract. It almost becomes easier 
It we're will be excited. scary still. We're yeah. excited. George, it's been so lovely to have you on the show today. Thank you for coming to join us. Of course, the album's out in June. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you look yeah, at me as if I know. Okay, no, right. I do. I, I believe it's June the 10th, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. June do the 10th. Do some other dates. Just in, case, uh, in May, June. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll edit that out. <laughs> no, the record is out on June the 10th. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's all very Finsby exciting. Park. Finsbury Park and everything that comes with the record. So there's just, you know, videos, artworks, shows, all of it. Uh, we're glad coming. to have you back. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having George me. Ezra. Have a lovely day. 